I am very glad to invite uh, this today national webinar on NAC accreditation and prospects and retrospects in uh, 5th and 6th August 2020, organized by Department of History, Thiruvallur College, Babanasam. Yeah, I wish to welcome all participants. I hope the previous event and six day webinar a great success at the same time. Uh, this two-day webinar also great success and participant. Thank you so much for your support us and welcome to uh, Department of History through Lower College Babanasam and introduce myself. I am Dr. Rajesh, Organizing Secretary, Assistant Professor of History through Lower College Babanasam. And uh, let us start the event. First of first of all, Tamita uh, Yuvalki. Prayer, sir. Thank you, thank you, Anandal. And I would like to thank, uh, with best blessings of Tavadiru uh, Guru Magasanidanam and Secretary Thiruvallur College Babanasam, and Honorable uh, Principal Dr. Y. Sundaram Sir Thiruvallur College, and respected Dr. Ravi Shankar Sir, IQC Coordinator, and Head of the Department History Thiruvallur College, and now. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Ravi Shankar, sir, the felicitations of this event. Sir, welcome, sir. Okay, thank you. Our respected uh, principal of Rulavar College, Babanasam, Dr. Sundaram, sir. Our uh, young, energetic, dynamic, efficient uh, assistant professor of Rulavar College, as well as the Organizing Secretary, Dr. Rajesh sir, and uh, our department colleague, and our today's speaker, our respectable Dr. A. Sayyid Agamad sir, Associate Professor of and Head, Department of History and also IQC Coordinator. So today, our Thiruvallur College is getting very really happy in conducting this program through Dr. Rajesh. Dr. Rajesh so far conducted so many, many quiz competitions and webinar classes and six days program, five days programs and, and next week also he is going to conduct uh, some workshop also. So it is a great work. So during this uh, lockdown period, only because of the efforts made by Dr. Rajesh, uh, he clearly utilized the opportunity and the situation. Even some big colleges, the colleges, those who traveled to more than 100 years, a few colleges uh, did this kind of uh, job, but it's very proud to say through the college also doing the same one. And uh, today our speaker, Dr. Sayyid Mughamundi sir, he is a senior most professor. So in my felicitation, I don't like to speak about it because my age is one. Because last year only I took charge for IQC coordinator. So already I uh, met Dr. Mogamudu sir about this uh, IQC because Sadhguttala College is number one in Bollywood area. 
they are going traveling towards excellence huh? already they got uh, a plus plus something I, i think that so that's why i want to say a few words regarding this one you know that uh, all and uh, again i uh, uh, welcome all the participants also i salute it so all the participants and all the professors those who are joining this meet uh, first of all i say a good morning to all of you the professors and the dear participants uh, india is you know that a big democracy and a multicultural country so it has a very long history also in compared with the other world of uh, superpowers therefore in the field of education also we are having some uh, long uh, largest as well as the diverse system in education we know in usa if we go to usa or some of the european countries they are having the same pattern of education since india is a multi culture we have a different culture states and each every state has uh, their own uh, universities and each university has uh, their own syllabus and the quality of education is differ from state to states we cannot uh, in india we no one can see that there is a common education from kanyakumari kashmir to kanyakumari there is no common education from primary level to higher level you know that if in manormani sundara university ba history students we are having certain syllabus for indian history while the delhi university and the affiliated colleges and the delhi university they are having the same indian history but the syllabus is different so like this in kai we go to west bengal and any states that are different from state to states so which states gives a higher edu- high quality of education which is not giving a quality of education that is a problem so that's why in the national policy 1986 and uh, the program of action 1992 so only this advocated the establishment of a independent body to look after to monitor the higher quality of higher education that's why now we say that national assessment and uh, the aggregation council is a independent body is established in 1994 so before 1994 if we want to rank the college simply just we meet the concerned authorities and we pay certain amount then we can construct the building and uh, get something some furnishes the blackboard some books something some apartment some apartment some apartment some teachers then we can start the college whether we are simply admitting students teaching something conducting examination awarding degree then after that whether the students going with the quality of education they are having some innovative thinking nobody is not worry about it from kashmir to kanyakumari it was happening before 1994 there is no monitoring authority in the colleges no in our colleges that we are getting salary from the joint director office they simply verify our documents certificate everything teachers quality and the university simply value the purpose nobody is not uh, didn't take up uh, care about the quality of students quality of teachers the quality of uh, college and the infrastructure nothing so that's why in the, uh, the uh, 1994 due to the establishment of the nac that is a independent body so now gradually india is getting some high, good quality of education you know that nac is a very very important one without nac we cannot get uh, quality of education that's why everyone must give the every government must give more importance to the education not only education it's a quality of education especially in higher education so now the days you know that every people even after completing degree ba or ma bsc msc how many people are going to uh, uh, get the job even after getting degree even first class they are not even go- going to compete in any examinations they are not able to success so because due to lack of the quality of education that's why the nag is doing very very important work and the, the, the nag is coming to concern college and look up to all these things and then giving a, a grade that is aggregate a plus a a a plus something na so whenever we are getting a good quality of aggregation that is uh, number of marks points we can get more funds from the uh, ugc grant commission then the college may, uh, may improve their infrastructures you know that for to appear uh, uh, nag you no know, we are having some kind of seven criteria our professor already is a highly experienced uh, speaker he will narrate anyway i want to say that because in there are seven uh, criteria since i am the coordinator of this uh, 
every college is having some day uh, what are the courses that's a very simple one sir we are having some ug 10 ug program and uh, uh, 10 pg programs and research program five it's a common one that's the curricular aspect but second one is teaching and learning evolution method is very important now at present how the teaching is there even they today the teachers are teaching the class simply they are going with some uh, things in the uh, paper and simply reading some teachers are reading the books some teachers are simply telling but today we are living in the digital world how many colleges they are uh, teaching uh, they are following uh, uh, powerpoint presentation how many colleges they are having uh, online uh, class uh, simply entering read something talk something and coming up so that is the uh, nac is giving more importance to teaching and the learning method how the students are learn how to make them to learn that's kind of things the nac is today are giving more important to the uh, college third one is the research consultancy and you know that extends but today some colleges having ug degree only so simply make them them to get a ug degree and after the students went to some other um, uh, universities so the teachers working in ug colleges they are having no research they are simply teaching these people so their college must improve their college infrastructure and also their uh, courses so that's when the ugc is also giving you know that research uh, uh, importance then infrastructure you know every day were uh, now the now this admission time so some most of the colleges having no infrastructure but they are collecting money and teaching something so there must be a good environment the management should give the good environment to the students community and the teachers uh, teachers then only they can give good uh, education that is yeah, automatically it will lead to the quality of education then student support then uh, leadership management innovative and best practice what i want to say that because these sort of qualities uh, seven criteria the ugc uh, that is a nag is uh, interesting to the management how the colleges are improving it the college must improve the infrastructure and they must improve the teachers quality students quality and all the public relations and the students follow up so many things are there so our purpose is going to explain uh, very clearly but what i want to say that at present day everyone is getting our degree and we want to set job that's all but whenever our children are going to some colleges we must every citizen of india every people must look after whether the college is having good infrastructure the teachers are having good quality the teachers are having good qualifications these are things we have to analyze we have to study before admitting our students that's why everyone must take interest then only we can improve our quality of education especially in higher education but that's the disparity is there for example if a student studying engineering in nai that is called nit you know that some nine nages are there just imagine that the student studying in nit some engineering some electrical engineering the same student studying in some other private engineering colleges without infrastructure both are, both are engineers but what's the quality of education so that's a questionable that's why the government is giving more importance and the government is organized an independent body that is called nag to look after the college and to improve the quality of education so it is depends upon the citizens the parents and the students and the teachers we all people jointly improve our higher quality of education and i am also giving uh, some uh, what is a guidance to the concerned colleges today so i hope that after the get after uh, going through this webinar each and every teachers those who are visiting this webinar each and every college purposes and students and all the management they definitely improve their college infrastructure their quality of higher education because higher education is very important because today is we are developing countries already we are going to compete with the developed countries so in order to compete with the developed countries let's uh, european countries we must improve our quality of education know that and of course india is giving some quality of education but yet we are not improved again we have to improve it so that's why uh, higher education is very important as well as to uh, to stimulate or to improve the higher quality of higher education the nac body is very very important and how is what is nac what is iqc on what kind of things to be done to get accreditation all these things our professor uh, um, said mogan sir definitely he will explain and will be very useful to us and i wish this program because time we are having limited time i felicitate the, and i wish this program 
will be definitely useful to all the participants the teaching community students community in the management and all the people and uh, definitely i wish the program will get success and before ending i definitely uh, say a few words about dr rajes you know that dr rajes is a very uh, the home secretary he is a very junior of this college you know that after for 28 purpose in trivulor college he is a, he may he stands only 25 26 place but he is only one person so far conducted so many uh, seminars so many peace competition so many uh, that is a uh, webinar classes because it, it shows that the quality of teachers so now i am not boosting him because this only in in the forum i want to say that so he said everyone must learn all the young teachers young purposes they must learn because the lockdown time we cannot go to college we have to exchange our views we have to exchange ideas so we must go to online classes so this kind of like rajesh and so many rajesh are there so the young energetic youth purposes they must come forward and you are the responsible for improving the quality of higher education so i wish rajesh and also i wish the program will get success thank you very much thank you sir yeah thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you so much for your uh, felicitation address thank you so much sir once again and i will i would like to special thanks uh, our college self finance director and college committee member and former principals and dr c alagappan sir and another one administrative officer tiruvallur college babanasam mr r nadrajan sir sir welcome sir and uh, introduce the resource person uh, i would like to ca call upon miss b anushya Yeah, Anushya, welcome, ma'am. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yes, ma'am, audible. Please introduce the resource person, ma'am. Welcome. Sure, yeah, sir. The sun says, "Wake up, like me." The sky says, "Fresh in everybody like me," and I say a very good morning to one and all gathered here. It makes me an immense pleasure and blessing of my day to welcome you all for the session. I now welcome Dr. A. Syed Muhammad, Associate Professor and Research Head, Department of Chemistry, IQAC Coordinator, Sadakatullah College, Rahmat Nagar, Tirunal Veli. He has completed his B.Sc. and M.Sc. in Chemistry, M.Sc. in Environmental Chem Sciences, and Master in Chemical Engineering. It's a great thing that he has cracked out in ninety-six with a percentage of eighty-six point eight. He has also cracked exams in December two thousand. He has been in and started twelve under the Tamil Nadu state government, and also a bike. textbook under the tamil nadu state government he has also have a work experience as a lecturer assistant professor and associate professor for more than 20 years he has guided a phd candidate and also guiding three more phd candidates he has also organized 17 national workshops and seminars and made them a grand success he is also a nac coordinator an nirf coordinator and as a paramash coordinator he has been editor in iqac newsletter since 2014 he is not only expert in academic achievement he is also a member of sport committee in his college last but not the least he is also a member of student committee council and advisory council in his college with immense pleasure i now welcome dr a sayed associate professor and research head department of chemistry and iqac coordinator salakatullapa college rakhmat nagar tirunelveli for the nac accreditation prospects and retro prospect nac accreditation organized by department of history trivalvar college papanasam tirunelveli i welcome you sir for the session thank you Yeah, sir. Welcome, uh, sir. 
now i have okay, to hand sir. over the resource person yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, very good morning to all. Uh, first of all, I express my sincere uh, thanks to the committee and uh, the management committee member, then the principal, the director of unaided courses, the IPC coordinator, and the HOD of uh, history, and also uh, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, uh, the HOD of uh, history as well as the IQC coordinator explain about the, the scenario of higher education. Rajesh? Uh, is it audible, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is it audible? Yeah, yes, yes, sir, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Carry on, sir. Uh, I can start with this quote. Uh, ensuring quality higher education is one of the most important things we can do for our future generation uh, by the former American politician on which uh, since higher education is becoming an international service, there is growing concern the world over about quality standards and recognition. Already, uh, the IQC committee explained about the, uh, the scenario of uh, higher education. So what is the meaning of quality? Because during the lockdown, the most of the colleges uh, are conducting uh, the webinar, the quiz program, and also uh, some the online uh, seminar or even the FTP program for the uh, welfare of the student community as well as the teaching faculty. Uh, you know that uh, nowadays we are using the word that is called uh, digital learning. So digital learning is nothing but the, the online teaching because the NAC also insists on uh, the most of the aspects like uh, the different types of learning. For example, learning means uh, we, can, we can say that is called participative learning, then experiential learning, uh, these are some words new coined by the NAC. Already, these words are there. Uh, regarding the this session, uh, I'm going to explain about only these six points alone. First of all, we are going to discuss about the revised accreditation format. So, how many institutions got uh, the grades? The next one, uh, we are going to discuss about the institution grades and accreditation and the distribution of metrics and key indicators across criteria. And the fourth one, they're going to discuss about the, what is the distinction between the NAC and NF ranking system. Then we come to the point that is called revised assessment and accreditation framework. At last, we are going to cover only this point alone that is called quantitative metrics. So first of all, uh, this is the, uh, the data I got from the NAC website. I'm collecting the information from 1st July 2017 to 4th August 2020. Uh, see here, the, 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 in the first column, I have mentioned the grade, and in the second one, I have mentioned that the number of higher education students then percentage. See, the topmost grade is A++, then A+, then followed by A, then B++, then B+, then B, C, and the last one is called D. Out of 1,571 higher education institutions, only 14 higher education institutions got the A++ is around less than 1%. In the case of the B+, 279 higher education institutions got the B+, it is around the 18%. Here, uh, the most of the institution, almost 33%, that is a one by third of the institution got uh, the B grade, that is approximately 522 high education institution got the B grade. Then, uh, because uh, the uh, IQC wanted to mention that uh, we are giving uh, the different type of uh, education system to different types. Here, I am just categorizing this one. The first of all, the first category is called university. The second category is called the autonomous college, and the third one that is called here the NAC distinguish the UG college and the PG college. Nowadays, they can even to the pharmacy college or even for the law college, then sanctuary college, like that, medical college also. They have given a lot of uh, categories. So, here 
out of uh, uh, this much institution, uh, 74 uh, higher education institution got the accredited. Then 131 higher education institution uh, in the case of the autonomous colleges. Then in the case of affiliated UG colleges, 407 higher education institution. So the remaining colleges is, now, is around 953 higher education institution. Then the, regarding the uh, what is the meaning of the A++ means? Uh, the A++ means if you got the score of uh, the 3.5124, that is called A++. If your institution got 3.262, 3.4, that is called A+. Uh, if any institution got 3.012, 3.25, definitely that grade is called A. Uh, then 2.7623, that is called D plus plus. Last grade is if the any institution got less than 1.5, that is called the D grade. We, we call it as not accredited. Here, here the problem is uh, our college, that is Southern Tulaga College, we are, we are going for the fourth cycle. Uh, in the early period, that is in 2007 or 2008, uh, the most of the institution are hesitant to go for the NAC. At that time, uh, our college, then nearby Sincerius College, and uh, there are some colleges from uh, Nagarville, and most of the colleges from the Tamil Nadu, they enter into the NAC. Uh, then um, at that time, we uh, prepared the NAC report by means of uh, only uh, the hot copy. Uh, these are bounded volume, more than 1,000 pages or 1,500 pages. Uh, it is equal to the earlier thesis. Then nowadays the NAC weighs the re-application format. Maybe I will explain later. So the, the, this is the another one that is called in the case of uh, I have mentioned four of categories: the universities, the autonomous colleges, then UG college, and the last one is called PG college. In all these type, only seven criteria. We will explain later. Then uh, in the case of universities and autonomous colleges, thirty-four key indicators. Then in the case of uh, especially the UG college only 31 key indicators in the case of PG college 32 key indicators then these key indicators are once again categorized into two that is called uh, qualitative metrics and one is called quantitative metrics in the case of uh, universities and PG colleges uh, 36 qualitative metrics in the case of autonomous college and UG college they only they are having 35 qualitative metrics then the in the case of quantitative metrics uh, 79 in the case of university for autonomous colleges 72 and in the case of uh, PG college 60 and the last category is called 58 for UG college. Maybe I hope that Tribal college come in this category that is called the PG college. In total for in the 115 metrics then 107 for autonomous colleges and uh, 93 for the UG college and 96 for the PG college. So this is the distribution of metrics and key indicators across the criteria. Then uh, here I, wa I want to mention some of the important points between uh, the difference between the NAC and the NIRF ranking system. In the case of the NAC, it is, pure, it is purely qualitative and quantitative. But in the case of the NAC, that is quantitative and evaluation. Uh, in the case of the NAC, the accreditation is, it is valid for five years, but the NIRF is valid only for the one year. It is a gradation. This one is called the ranking. Then the entire process consists of internal evaluation and the outcome to be endorsed by the NAC. Here we are sending the data and the announcement of the rank after the due verification. Maybe this is done by the MHRD. Then here it deals with various processes, strategies in operation and their outcome. But here it deals with only the various uh, and the end result only. Various process and only the end results. Here seven criteria I have already mentioned. The five parameters, uh, 32 key aspects. Here only 16 sub parameters. Then, uh, because already Professor pointed out the, the seven criteria the teaching, learning, and the evaluation. Here I'm mentioning the 300 and 350 for the different types of uh, uh, the colleges. But in the case of 40 percentage is started for teaching, learning, and resources. Uh, in the case of research and services, uh, 150, then 110 and 100 for, for the different institution. Then, in the case of the NIRF, uh, research consultancy, productivity, impact, in extension, IPR in, is around 20 percentage. In the case of NIRF, the graduate outcome is 15 percentage. Here, we use this word that is called student support and progression. The weightage is 10 percentage. Here, we are giving some importance to the student profile and extension service. Uh, uh, here, in the case of the NAC, we are using these terms governance and leadership, innovation and best practices, but there is no place for governance and leadership, innovation and best practices for NIRF. Uh, here, in the case of NIRF, 
very important as well for perception is around 20 percentage but here in the case of nag there is no perception but here we are using the word student satisfaction survey uh, here we are giving importance to curricular aspect but in the case of the net there is no place at all so this is the distinction between the nag and the narf the I am looking for a more detailed application. In the early days, uh, we, we can use the word um, the, uh, most of the colleges are the world, in our the teaching community. We use the word uh, transparency is not that uh, because uh, um, they, they, they can um, that is uh, with the help of the peer team they got the good score. But it is not like that. Nowadays we can use the word qualitative peer judgment because in the early days we use the word peer judgment. But here nowadays, the data-based quality quantitative indicator, the evaluation with the increased objectivity and transparency. Whatever data you are submitting to the NAC, that should be verified by the third party. That's very important. Here we can use the word extensive use of ICT confirming scalability and robustness. We are using it. We are purely dependent on the ICT. Uh, because in in terms of the volumes are like that, but here there's no like that. Then what about the simplification? Here, then they, 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 they reduce the democracy, the size before, busy days, and so on. Because somebody, one of the professors mentioned that uh, India is nothing but unity in diversity. Because in the, if, it, if, the, if you compare the syllabus of the Punjab University as well as our Manomani Center University, there is a lot of variation. Because they are giving importance to the local relevant areas. For example, uh, in the case of the, the chemistry, uh, especially uh, in nearby area, there is Sibahas is there. The most of the colleges are giving importance to uh, their own area important. For example, uh, they are giving importance to a pyrotechnic like that. But so, uh, whether pyrotechnic is applicable for the Punjab University, it is not. Because based on the need, we have to uh, enrich our settlements. That is a very important one. Then in the case of the benchmark again, uh, for example, uh, a lot of... Uh, a uh, lot of uh, um, external agencies are in the world. At least the NAC has uh, almost competence with the, the external agency in the world. Then we need to submit the report, then we are waiting for the, the approval from the NAC. Nowadays it is not that. If you submit the, uh, some report, there is the SSR to the NAC website. Uh, here we are, they introduce the term that is called pre qualifier. Uh, if any institution got a yeah, minimum of 25 percentage of the pre qualifying system generator score, then only the peer team will receive the college. Then, here the thing is uh, in the LA case, only the 100 percent is based on the 70 percentage is only elevation and the 30 percentage is only the peer uh, the, the peer team doesn't know the score taken by the institution for the 30 percentage. So, that is the potential meeting by the internet. Then here, the very important necessity is for third-party validation of data. Suppose, uh, as I say, in my college, out of uh, 170 faculty, uh, 167 faculty got PhD. Uh, so for that, we are some just uploading the, uh, the some files to the, the NAC website. But the thing is that third-party validation, they will ask, uh, you, you are mentioning that 160 people got PhD. So the, uh, the PhD awarded uh, or PhD degree certificate like that. If you are not uh, producing the, the certificate to the that party validation, definitely you, you will lose the mark. That is a very important one. Third party validation. Here, the other aspect is diversity. Because one benchmark is not one benchmark is not applicable to uh, universities or autonomous colleges, affiliated colleges, and constituent colleges. One college is as I said, that is located in urban area, the other college is located in rural area. So definitely we have to give some uh, that is uh, differences because they, they are key for that. Unfortunately, the recent guideline uh, uh, may be they are going to uh, that is combine all the things in one number block. Right? Then the revising several metrics bring in enhanced participation of students and alumni in the assessment process. Because uh, you know there is so many stakeholders on that. First of all, the stakeholders are the teaching community, that's our faculty, then uh, the administrative staff, our supporting staff, the colleges, then the, the parents, then alumni, then students, the management committee, and the so here the same of stakeholders. Here there are importance to the students and alumni in the assessment process. So these are the some changes uh, taking place in the revised application form. Then 
regarding the acquisition process, first of all, uh, I, I, Audible? Uh, yes, sir. Is it audible? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Carry on, sir. Okay, okay. So, in the revised accreditation process, uh, the NAC accreditation process, first of all, we start with um, the higher education institution registration. So, if any institution having uh, AISH, uh, then they will register in the, in the NAC website. Then, after that, uh, you go for I, I Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, not a visual for your PPT, sir. Okay. Can I do? Yeah, wait, sir. Wait. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. Okay. Uh, with your permission, I'm just uh, uh, stopping my video because there's uh, some uh, internet problems out there, right? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I'm just uh, stop my video, but, right? Now the PowerPoint is visible to you. PowerPoint is visible. Okay. Maybe now it is okay, right? Uh, uh, regarding the NAC application process, the, the institution should first of all register in the higher in the NAC portal. Then after that, uh, then IA2A, uh, if it is accepted, you have to submit the SSR. That is, I already mentioned one is called quantitative metrics, other one is called qualitative metrics. So what is the submission time is within 45 days. So in total, we are we are having a 60 days time. If it is rejected, uh, if the IAQ is registered, uh, rejected, uh, you have to attend two times with the same key. That's very important one. The next one, uh, the other aspect, after submitting the SSR, uh, the, the third party, that's called data validation and verification, uh, we, they will ask some the details about the uh, what are the information regarding your, the SSR, they will ask. The other important aspect is that is called student satisfaction survey. Here, the weightage is around 10%. Uh, they will send some questionnaire to the your student. So before that, you have to send the students' details to the, the NAC. Then, uh, after the people, uh, after the qualification, if it is passed, uh, then the, the P team will visit uh, will, they, they, within 90 days. Then they will summarize the, the result of uh, the QLM and the, the QNM. Then they can they calculate the CGPA and this will be declared. If you are uh, still in the pre-qualification, you have to apply again with the IAQA. So you have to pay the fees, the fresh. There. So this this is the uh, very simple process uh, made by the NAC. Then here, uh, I'm going to discuss about the uh, quantitative metrics. So for the first aspect that is called curricular aspect, the weightage is the 100. Uh, here for your reference, I have mentioned, uh, the universities, then autonomous colleges, and affiliated colleges, I have categorized into two, that is called UG and BG. Uh, here, uh, there are four key indicators. The first one, the curricular planning and implementation. Uh, because uh, since, since your college is not an autonomous college, the curricular design and development uh, is not applicable for the affiliated as well as the constituent colleges. Here, the, for curricular planning and implementation, the 20 weightage for UG college and 20 weightage for the PG college. In almost the curricular aspect, all the uh, key indicators is the same for the UG as well as the PG colleges. In total, uh, the weightage is 100. So here, I want to mention this 1.1. 1 
so here the one the first one correspond to the criteria one and the second one corresponds to the key indicator so here how many key indicators there is a four key indicators here we will discuss one by one the academic flexibility then curriculum in enrichment and the last one is feedback system so they, these are the four key indicators uh, regarding the curricular aspect what is the weightage the weightage is about 300 100 the 10 percentage of the uh, total ctpa then here i have mentioned some of the uh, metrics here i start with 1.1.3 so this one corresponds to criteria one and the second one corresponds to key indicator and the third one corresponds to the metrics. So this is an example of the quantitative metrics. Here I mentioned that Q, N, M. In most, uh, you just remember, if you see Q, N, M, so this process are data-based, right? Then Q, L means based on the data, you are summarized, you sum up the, the thing. So that is called Q, L. Only the Q, L will be verified by the PT member. This Q, L is verified by the, the data validation. There is called DBB process. Now, we will come to the question. Uh, here, um, the question is, the matrix is very simple. How many teachers are participating uh, in uh, the academic council or board of studies of affiliating university, uh, setting up posting paper for UG and PG program, design and development of curriculum for add-on course or certificate course or diploma courses, or assessment, the evaluation process of the university. So for the past five years, suppose if you go for the uh, the next academic year, for example, if any institution go for the NAC pre accreditation by 2022 to 2023, now the assessment period is for the five years. The five years means uh, 21, 22, then 20, 21, 19, 20, then 18, 19, and uh, 17, 20. So this is the uh, assessment period. For these five years, you have to give the uh, details, especially for this question. So here I mentioned that, so what is the data template required? Year-wise list of teachers in your college or in your institution, 100 faculties are there. So you mentioned 100 faculty, then you, you put the first two column like first year, then second year, then third year, fourth year, and fifth year. Now you, you just to categorize to some of the thing. How many teachers are involved in, for example, in the case of the history department, two teachers are involved in academic council or board of studies of applied university. We just mentioned the two teachers' name. Then for that two teachers, you have to give some record, some document. So what is the document uh, for the academic council member or board of studies member? Definitely the university will send the communication to the prospective teacher just to scan the document to put it in the form of a hyperlink in the Excel sheet. That is very important. Uh, almost almost all the faculty are involved in setting up posting paper we just categorize then some faculties are especially involved in design and development of curriculum for add-on course or certificate course or diploma course in some of the colleges they are conducting lot of certificate courses for example certificate course in photography or certificate course in mushroom cultivation or farming composting, or uh, the water and soil analysis, or computer stack coding. These are the certificate courses. Then add on courses, nothing but, for example, if any students have uh, are lacking in uh, some basic fundamental, so just you are add on the course in your curriculum. These courses are not included in the credit, total credit. They are giving extra credit. That is called add on or certificate or diploma courses. Then almost 100% of teachers are involved in. The evaluation process or assessment process of the updating university. Definitely the university sent a communication to the respective faculty or definitely nowadays they are giving in the form of the SMS. Just to request the university to send uh, so details the how many faculties of uh, Papa College, uh, Thrivalu College involved in the evaluation process. You just to get the signature from the principal then this is the document required for 1.1.3. So you just to summarize all the document in the form of a template that is uh, given by the NAC. Then I, I want to mention one more point. The total document size should not exceed 5 EM. Right? That is the thing. For example, if you are uploading uh, the documents received from the faculty, for example, uh, yeah, the 100 faculties are giving some documents like the selection letter or appointment order. Definitely the size will be uh, you make your website dynamic. In the case of the website, you can put 
all the documents in a hyperlink or in a separate folder. Then you take the uh, hyperlink from the website, then you can paste in the Excel sheet. So this is the very simple method for making the document visible to the NAS. Suppose if you are putting the document in Google Drive or OneDrive, it is not accepted by the NAC. Only the document provided in the website that is acceptable by the NAC. So here the maximum size is 5 MP only. So based on that, uh, you can uh, put the other documents, other scan the document in your website. Then from the website, you can take the link that should be pasted in the, the Excel sheet recommended by the NAC. Then regarding the 1.2.1, already mentioned, one is corresponding to the first criteria, the two is corresponding to the key indicator, and one that is called metric. So here also I'm discussing only the quantitative metrics. Here, the question is very simple. How many programs? Here now, nowadays they're using the word programs. Earlier we are using the word courses. Now that is called programs. BA program or BSc program or BCom program. Then earlier we use the word subject. Now they're using the word course. Now. How many programs in which choice-based credit system or elective course system has been implemented? Since our college is an example of affiliated uh, college, especially to the Manoom National University, you get the document from the MS University, how many percentage of program in which CDCS or elective course system has been implemented? You write all the program. So in the case of the college, you are having BCom, or some BSc chemistry program like that. You write all the program that is either then sales SF, then how many programs are adapting CDPS and how many programs are adapting elective board system like that. You just uh, uh, put in the data template, then you get the notification uh, received from the university and also the syllabus that is very important. You put this, you display the syllabus on your website. That is very important. Suppose if you are having any notification received from the university that also should be pasted in the 1.2.1 template for this the weightage is 10 then the regarding the add-on courses or certificate courses for the five years last five years how many programs you have conducted how many add-on courses or how many certificate programs are they conducted are they offering this course more than one time means then the thing is how many students completed the course the thing is for example in your college, 1,700 is the strength of names. At least uh, 340 or 20% of the students will study this course. That is enough for this. If you are framing the add-on course program or certificate program, you should ensure that the total contact hour is more than 30. That is very important. For any program or for any add-on courses program or certificate program, first of all, a syllabus will be there. Uh, the, then you can, you can prepare a brochure. Then after the admission, you have to maintain the attendance, then certificates, then reports, and also the feedback uh, received from the student. That is very, very important. Uh, without this document, the NAC won't accept uh, the certificate program, right? That is a very important one. Suppose if you are conducting a certificate program, definitely that should be approved by any of the body. That is very important. For example, if you are sending the report to the university, if the university has approved, then you can show the approved letter from the university. Suppose uh, if you are conducting your program on your program on your own, then you get the approval from the your management committee, right? That is a very important one. That document should be presented in 1.2.1. If the weightage is one, one uh, that is 10. Regarding the the next one, that is for 1.2.3. Here also I am mentioning that. How many percentage of students enrolled in certificate or add-on program? You can look at data template. The names of students, uh, how many students are registered for this particular course, and how many students pass this course, like that. You can put the entire detail in the data template. You have to uh, mention that timetable, then certificate list, uh, whether uh, any subject has been issued to the students like that, uh, you, all these uh, documents should be mentioned in 1.2.3. Then, uh, regarding uh, the 1.3.2, because already I uh, mentioned, uh, there are three types of uh, learning. One is called uh, experiential learning, then collaborative learning, the last one is called participative learning. Suppose, uh, if, you, if you are teaching uh, the subject, 
uh, only uh, in the classroom mode definitely the students get bored for example if you are saying that uh, this is a museum uh, uh, you are there is a lot of facilities are there you can use augmented reality or virtual reality uh, you can uh, easily with the help of the internet they can easily visit the museum uh, without physical right uh, then there are lot of uh, apps out there right suppose if you are not having that apps then you, uh, you that is you take the students to the near the museum then you can show uh, this one is called experiential learning the other thing is that is called uh, participative learning and the last one is called collaborative learning the thing is uh, how many courses that include experiential learning uh, through project work or field work or internship year while during the last 5 years uh, you mentioned the name of the course then details of experiential learning through project work or field work or internship in which is it is if you have any mou or any certificates you should give the documents in the uh, mac portal for this the weightage is 10 the next one is how many percentage of students because in the in our university syllabus almost uh, all the students are doing the project work especially the third year or some some students belonging to second year or doing the field work definitely uh, you are getting a good score in this criteria for example there are some programs they are offering an internship also for the internship uh, how many students undertaking project or field work and how many students are editing project that should be categorized uh, in 1.3.3 uh, then uh, program is department uh, number of students with a complete breakup uh, complete breakup uh, then you have to show the photographs i suppose if you receive appreciation letters or invitation letter the project report or certificate uh, you should show the documents Uh, or you should upload the document on the NAC portal. Uh, next one is uh, so sorry, sorry. Uh, the next thing is uh, how many students are undertaking project work, then field work or internship. Uh, next one. I uh, hear the very important aspect is the field access. Uh, see here, see here. Um, because you are not framing the syllabus. Only the university, the board of study member are framing the syllabus. So the here, the thing is the institutions whether the institution about any feedback uh, about the syllabus, uh, about the syllabus and its transaction at the institution from the following stakeholders. So here, uh, they are asking the feedback uh, from the, the four stakeholders, especially the students, then teachers, then the employers, then alumni. So you collect the feedback. So I will show the, the next one, right? Uh, here, uh, the first one is uh, feedback collected. Suppose if we are mentioning feedback not collected means automatically uh, you will get the zero only, right? Suppose if you collected the feedback from the uh, respective stakeholders, then this is the first one. The second one, feedback collected and analyzed. Then. So analyze means uh, you, you are categorizing uh, whether this uh, syllabus or this curriculum is um in there is employment base or society then the collector analyzed an action has been taken you are discussing with your uh, the management committee or your academic council or like that then the thing is you will send the uh, analyzed feedback to the concerned university that is very important so feedback collector analyzed an action taken and the feedback available on the website if you are doing the first category definitely you will get a good score or good weightage in on 1.4.2 uh, then uh, we will move to the criteria 2 that is called teaching learning and evaluation here the percentage is around uh, 35 percentage of the total weightage that, that is called 350 see here i'm talking about uh, i'm discussing about uh, this one uh, uh, there's seven key indicators of that uh, as uh, 2.1 that is called student enrollment profile in the case of the PG college, that is 40. Into student diversity, 50. Teaching learning process, 50. Teacher profile and quality, 60. Evaluation process and reforms, 30. Students' performance and learning outcome, that is called 60. Then student satisfaction survey, that is called 60. In total, the weightage is 35 percentage of the total weightage, that is called 350. Then, uh, regarding the quantitative metrics, 
are here and talking about 2.1.1. I want to just uh, mention what is the meaning of 2.1.1. Uh, this two corresponds to uh, this two corresponds to criteria. This one corresponds to key indicator, and this one corresponding to the matrix. So two point one point one. Here they're asking uh, how many percentage of in the last of the years, how many phones are admitted, how many sanctions seat is very important. So here uh, the land ratio, number of received application to number of available seat usually come to some to eighty percentage. So you mention uh, year wise and program wise uh, through on this. I mentioned uh, for five years, for example, 15, 16, or 16, 17, or 17, 18, or 18, 19, or 19, 20. That's why year wise and program wise become you have to mention the student days. Suppose if you are, uh, you are having any correspondence letter from the JDU office or university, uh, you have to mention the student strength also in the NAC portal. Then, uh, for this, the weightage is 20. Then, the regarding the uh, the 2.1.2, because uh, we have to uh, allotted seats for various category. That is for research category: SC, then ST, then OBC, then the young gen aspect, the applicable research policy during the uh, uh, last five years. <laughs> because the thing is the exclusive of super university. Because uh, sometimes the university gives extra seat. Don't include that. Right. As per, for example, in the case of uh, in some colleges, the income is uh, there, there, the sanction is 64, like that. Just want that only how to categorize. The number of students earmarked for reserve category as per Government of India or state government. Here, their NAC is focused on student diversity, that is very important. Uh, uh, because uh, a lot of things are there. In one uh, state, uh, one fellow is in a different community, uh, they are not giving importance to uh, the higher education system. Uh, in other state, they are giving the importance like that. So based on that, the NAC is giving importance to student diversity. Whether the college is having uh, the various uh, the students are having various category, or ST or ST or OBC or yeah. they follow the uh, reservation as per the group of India. Mm -hmm. So you have to mention all the list in 2.1.2. Then regarding the student full time teacher ratio, for example, even in your college, uh, you are having uh, 2,000 students. And you are having only 100 uh, full time teachers. Rajesh? Rajesh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, sir. Some network issue, sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, is it audible? Yeah, yes, sir. Audible, sir. So, in the regarding the student full time teacher ratio, uh, I have mentioned that uh, you are having the 2000 students, then the 100 uh, faculties are there. Just to calculate the student full time teacher ratio, for example, 2000 divided by 100, that is called the 20. But here, so not to solve for your PPT, sir. Uh, PPT is not sharing, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, sir. Okay, okay sir. I, I will rectify that. Oh, wait a yeah. minute. Uh, is it visible? Yeah, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Okay. So, in the case of student teacher ratio, uh, suppose if you are having 2000 students and uh, only in the 100 faculty, 2000 divided by 100, that is called the 20. So, in the case of the uh, traditional program, even they can allow 1 is to 20, 30, but uh, if you are having 1 is to 20, it is very good. Uh, what is the meaning of the full team teachers? Uh, suppose if there are any teachers engaging 90% of the work that is for the thing is very important one the total number of students enrolled in the institution and total number of full time teachers in the institution the last uh, uh, last five years they are asking only for the latest completed academic year they are calculating only for the latest completed year for example if they are going for the NAC this year 2021 so you have to show the data of 2019-20 uh, so that that is the data for the latest completed year uh, next one is Uh, here, the other important aspect, the mentoring aspect. So, the uh, suppose uh, whether the the full time faculty or some teachers are giving uh, mentoring uh, 
uh, to the students. They're asking the, I mean, the mentoring details. As we hear the mentoring means, uh, for example, uh, nowadays uh, the students are facing a lot of uh, issues, especially during the COVID-19. Uh, so uh, you have to address the students. Uh, definitely, uh, you will learn because some students are not having facilities uh, like mobile phone or the internet. Definitely, they are more stressed. Uh, definitely, the teacher will call the student. Uh, definitely, you can make some arrangement. Definitely, uh, don't lose your hope. Uh, we will uh, put the uh, our teaching videos or the teaching module in either in YouTube because uh, during this time itself, a lot, lot of uh, internet problems are there. Right? Definitely, if you are teaching uh, in some more, definitely the students also not able to follow the thing. For example, if any mathematics teacher is deriving uh, first one, then first derivation, second derivation, third derivation, then after that. Uh, if the internet is lost, connectivity is lost automatically, the students are not able to cope up the, the next step. That is a problem. So you have to address your students. Uh, don't worry about that. At the end of the session, definitely, we record the thing. Then after that, after recording, we will post in the YouTube. Uh, during your leisure time, you can watch the video. If you are having any doubt, you can ask me in WhatsApp or Telegram like that. So this is the type of services, right? Because uh, we, can, we cannot expect uh, after only after the lockdown, uh, we will start the classes means it is very difficult to complete the portion. That is the thing. Uh, because uh, neighboring students are doing some work means uh, definitely uh, we also we are giving some importance to our student also. So this type of mechanism that should be uh, maintained in the institution. Then if you are having any policy, mentorment policy, because uh, this is a crucial issue. The, the thing is uh, that should having a policy. Without policy, without standard of procedure, we can do like that. For example, uh, the government uh, released uh, the standard of procedure for the online classes just a, just a week before. Right? The, the thing is, uh, in most of the institutions, especially the school, they started uh, the online classes in the month of May itself. Right? The May itself. The thing is, uh, without standard operation procedure, if you are doing some work, definitely that will affect the uh, rest of the uh, rest of the part of the India. That is the problem, right? Uh, so uh, before going to the new era, first of all, you have to address all the problems, all the things. You should have a standard operational procedure. Without SOP, don't go for new policies, right? This is this is my suggestion, right? Suppose if you are having the mentality documents, that should be good. That should be displayed in the on the website. That, that is distributed to the student. That is distributed to the uh, teachers or mentors. Suppose if you are having a trained counselor, well and good. Definitely, you will get good page in two point three point three. Uh, the other question is: average percentage of full-time teachers against sanction post during the last three years. If any institution, the 50 per faculty is that only they are having 27 uh, teachers, means definitely you will last, uh, uh, sorry, you will lose some marks in 2.4.1. Right? Uh, then, regarding the profiles to a staff profile, uh, how many faculty are having PhD or DSD uh, or DEAD? So, year wise, irrespective of year of award, the number of board number of full time teachers, you have to uh, categorize. For example, if a teacher got a PhD or uh, DSD means you give importance only for DSC that can be counted only once only. Here the thing is you have to uh, ensure that you take the scanned copy of the PhD certificate and other certificate that should be uh, that is posted or uploaded on your uh, uh, website. Uh, if any questions arise from DBB, definitely you can send them to the DBB. Uh, then, uh, regarding the average teaching experience of full-time teachers, for example, if the institution started only five years back, definitely the teaching experience of full-time teachers would be um, no, not a good thing. But for example, in some, some colleges or that, very old colleges, um, uh, most of the people have 20 plus years, then you summarize all the thing. Then, uh, here the DBV asks some random teacher document, for example, uh, they will ask, uh, you give me details of this uh, point, or uh, do you show me the uh, 
or suppose if you have no time to find service letter like that so thing is you have to keep the documents ready for the last five years the thing is they are asking name of the faculty then uh, pan or designation or department so you should give the appropriate documents like appointment document or uh, service certificate of the teacher then the other thing is regarding the evaluation part the average pass percentage of students during last five years how many students pass the examination during last five years uh, then how many students uh, appear for the final examination um, here in most of the college they are having uh, good weightage in this 2.3 6.3 regarding 2.7 the student satisfaction survey after the submission of ssr you have to prepare a excel sheet containing name of the student then student id number or other other number or mobile number email id degree program you should give the document to the excel and mac then mac will send the question to the uh, student the thing is uh, in most of the colleges they have already got good uh, um that is a grade in previous neck but they are miserably failed in the student satisfaction survey because the students are not uh, uh, responding to this question for example uh, if you send a question to a student definitely uh, they are not uh, reluctantly to open the mail but the thing is if you are getting good mentoring system in your college definitely that and to look after that mentees especially um, they 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 call the mentees uh, have you received any mail from the neck Uh, if so, uh, just uh, fill the form. All right. Before that, uh, my sincere suggestion is uh, you give some training uh, for the students, especially regarding student statistics survey. Uh, some questions, uh, some objective questions are only one question is descriptive. Uh, you uh, because the weightage is uh, 60. Definitely, uh, if you lose this weightage, definitely it will affect your the next score also. Then regarding criteria three, uh, we have just Talking about research, uh, research. Uh, here, uh, first of all, we start with the three point one uh, promotion of research and facility. It is not applicable for the PG college. Uh, in the case of resource mobilization for research, in the case of innovation, the ecosystem the weightage is ten. For this case, for PG college, then research publication and awards twenty five weightage. There is no um, weightage for consultancy. It's not applicable for UG and PG college. Extension activities way of fifty. The last one collaboration tour. There is twenty in total, hundred and twenty for uh, a weightage for the PG college. Then regarding the three point one point one, the grant received from government and non-government agency for research project. Here only the quality speak. If you appoint a quality faculty, a uh, faculty with a high profile, definitely. That people will get grant from government agency like uh, UGC or DST or uh, whatever agency, the grant a external agency, they will get some grant. So if you are having good project, definitely a uh, good package. So here you have to summarize what are the projects received for the five years. You have to show the proposal, then sanction letter, then progress report. So the project is completed. Uh, you have to show the utilization certificate, etc. So these are the documents. Then regarding 3.1.2, here the, the percentage of departments having research project funded by a government and non-government agency. So because in you know, terms of department, department, like in the case of three, uh, is it audible? Audible, sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Carry on. Okay. So in the in the case of uh, uh, 3.1.1. It is talking about the grant received by the faculty, but here it is talking about the percentage of department having research project. So, uh, if a, the individual faculty got a good uh, uh, project from the uh, government authorities, definitely the uh, the department also had a good research project. Then, regarding the uh, other question, because the three point one point two is applicable for the UG college, here I am talking about the for the PG college. The percentage of teachers recognized as research guides. See the difference. In the case of UG College, because uh, Sir pointed out that uh, for UG colleges uh, we are not having a research lab, right? Of course, we accept. But the thing is, the NAC considered this one because without a, a research lab, uh, we cannot get good grants. Uh, a good grants.
uh, good grants so automatically uh, we have to uh, focus on um, the teachers the how many teachers are these guys the thing is you have to collect the information from all the teachers uh, you can put in the form of a uh, the template uh, that is a, a provided by the the max then you that can be uploaded then in the case of uh, this is a very important aspect about seminars conferences during uh, the last few years for example in most of the colleges nowadays they are conducting uh, webinars right uh, the, the, the question is uh, whether the nac is accepting these type of webinars definitely the nac will release the sop very soon then we will get a good page in one point the thing is uh, you have to mention the date the funding agency collaboration and what the document agreed document is proposal sanction letter the reports suppose if you got any funds from ugc you have to mention you have to mention uh, suppose we are having geo tag photographs uh, nowadays uh, most of faculty or teaching classes uh, having this individual chat so that is also necessary so you know that you just uh, switch on your mobile then uh, you just uh, add the location that on your geo tag photographs is important for the activities then regarding 3.2 uh, the subscription awards how many applicants get in the reputed channel especially on a few category right till the last five years so here i want to mention uh, you collect all the information factory put it in the excel sheet that is very important the thing is uh, you have to provide uh, information uh, that is true information uh, otherwise the the data dbb will verify this very easily right for example they will type simply type through the college from 2015 to 2020 they will get the, get the information very easily that information and in institution provided information should be reputation also then uh, whether the pg college it is the innovation I, they, whether they have taken any initiative for creating a transfer of knowledge whether they have established any incubation center for example if, 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 if the students are interested in this uh, uh, have to develop an incubation center the higher education institution higher education institution uh, for smooth functioning of incubation center uh, likewise you can give some information also then the other thing is uh, uh, regarding the books and published by uh, faculty or uh, even if published in a uh, national international company that should be put in the excel sheet the thing is very simple you take the scanned copy of the research paper published in conference or proceedings along with the cover page published with the faculty and the research paper that is very important if one faculty published 10 papers in conference proceeding means you ask the faculty uh, give the information of the 10 papers right uh, nowadays the facilities are very simple you, within your mobile phone you can take the um, that is scanned copy either using the cam scanner or using uh, some uh, indian uh, app you can use this one uh, with the help of that you can see uh, take the uh, scanned copy and the publication faculty send to the iqc coordinator that is a very easiest method right so for this weightage is okay then regarding uh especially for the pg yes they are having they included a very important point have you conducted any uh, research methodology seminar or ipr seminar or entrepreneurship program during the last few years the thing is very simple uh, before the, the in early days we use the word uh, first of all you do research then after that you publish right? publish or perish this is the term used in the Yeah, it is. Nowadays, after publication, don't limit yourself. You go for the patent, right? So that's the other important aspect. Then there, 
uh, have you given any training or non-teaching training for the students? Likewise, if you do some activity, you can include the activity in the do. Its weightage is five. Then the very important aspect is nowadays the most of the colleges, most of the colleges are doing good in extensive activity because uh, uh, I have already mentioned that do not take for is only community or writing. What students are doing in the communal supplies in the neighborhood community, or are you giving any sensitization program for the students to do social uh, that is activity or the policy development or impact on the past five years? Uh, if you are doing a good school in math, but the thing is you are doing good for the student community, like that's important. Even the department level will do. Some good work for developing the uh, the holistic development. Service. The school track will change because they are having a lot of distraction, lot of distraction. Uh, for avoiding the distraction, the college will insist on the student to do uh, some good activities like that. Suppose if you uh, sorry, uh, if you conduct some activity, definitely you are having definitely you are having some Geotag photographs that should be uploaded on the NAC website. Then, uh, here, uh, how many PhD registered uh, to last five years? In the earlier question, how many PhD, how many PhD photos are there? Now the question changes. Uh, how many students, how many research scholars are doing PhD under the eligibility check last five years? So you have to provide the uh, the information of the registered student. Nowadays, uh, if any students uh, register PhD in the MS University, they're having a FACA document. You get the document from the student that should be uploaded on the NAC portal. Then, whether you college or your faculty or any awards or organization, especially for extension activities, that are uh, some amount fifty thousand rupees or one lakh years like that. So that's the recognition from the government or the own recognition body. So you categorize you act for the version in the data template that should be uploaded. The is regarding the NSS uh, there is a activity or NCC, Red Cross or ORC because the government initiated some programs like search or as gender issue like that. Are they connected to the issues? Then um, you can um, collect the information from the external activity. That's the form of it. Then that will be displayed on the website. The other thing is, suppose if you are conducting a program in Swachit Bharat, suppose if you are taking some video, that video should be uploaded on your YouTube channel. That you should provide the YouTube channel link to all your students as well as next, right? That will increase your score also, right? Then. How many students participated in extension activity? Because the problem is they are doing a lot of activities in institution. But the thing is, we are not maintaining the students' attendance. Here, they insist on the students. For example, one, for one NSS unit, 50 students are allotted. Like, if we are having two uh, NSS units, 100 students, then you have to make that these students are participated in such bar. These students are participating in oh yeah, the, there is um, the um, plantation awareness program like that. So you categorize. Then if the students name of the students are not usually uh, repeated, if it is not it is, uh, sorry, if it is repeated, it is not usually accepted. So you have to collect the feedback. Suppose if you are doing some government programs, uh, you get feedback from the people, right, from the community. That should be also included in the data template. Then the collaboration, right? I am uh, talking about the, the collaboration. I have switched on to uh, the MOUs, right? So here I'm going to the 15 and 4. So the, regarding the infrastructure and learning resources, so for example, the star finder without infrastructure, what we do? Because uh, we are having the NAC is concentrating on uh, physical facility, the library, IT infrastructure, and maintenance of campus infrastructure. If you are not having a good library, definitely your institution not is up to the point. The library is very important one. Then IT infrastructure is part of the day. Every classroom should be at least having a which one? A, a PowerPoint tool like that, or a research project like that. Uh, almost in all the classrooms, it is not possible, right? So because of the heavy um, that is 
uh, amount required we cannot do like that but the thing is at least uh, we can provide uh, some uh, especially there's a project so we were maintaining the campus in project that is very really important the weightage is under as i say there is no distinction between universities autonomous and affiliated colleges weightage is only 100 then regarding the documents and talking about 4.1.3 uh, how many um, the classrooms are in class with ICD enabled such as smart class or LMS? Here I want to mention the LMS. It is called a learning management system. For example, what is the meaning of learning management system? For example, in the online, the first problem is how to assemble all the students in a particular classroom. Nowadays, most of the colleges they are doing with the help of Google Classroom or uh, with the help of Zoom or Microsoft Teams, they are doing some activities, right? Very good. The next thing is, uh, have you taken any attendance? The attendance taking is a biggest problem. Suppose uh, in the case of the GHP, automatically the problem will be rectified. Because for GHP, only uh, we have to pay 150 rupees uh, for a single user uh, or 200 rupees for the uh, almost for a department. Suppose if you are having the LMS facility, then it is well and good that will increase the the next four also because the taking attendance because the joint dialogue is always asking the attendance uh, how many students participated then how many uh, students are absentees in the classroom like that they were asking like that so you have to provide the attendance list to the, the help of the lms is very easy uh, then you have to show the geo tag the photos right that is very important one right then regarding the 4.1 point for how much percentage of uh, amount you are uh, especially spending for uh, infrastructure documentation procedures and they are not in, in, because they are not concerned about the salary they are asking only how much percentage of expenditure uh, spending for infrastructure documentation uh, then you have to highlight the budget especially from the auditor PWC statement or extract signed by the auditor uh, then regarding the library they are asking whether the library has got any system uh, in the uh, library like, uh, E journals, E schools in the South Ganga membership, E books, database, remote access to E resources. If you are having any subscription, definitely they will ask the membership letter. Or suppose if the infant is not able to give the only screenshot and you can put the uh, web link, there is knowledge resource with uh, a web link uh, having all subscription details and access that will give good weightage in 4.2.2. Then regarding the expenditure uh, for the last five years, how much amount you are. Uh, allotted for purchasing books and e-books and subscribe to channels, e channels like that. Suppose if they are downloading some books from the uh, internet, that is not accepted as an e-book. That should be uh, properly uh, decision as e-book, then will be given as right? Regarding the uh, other important is for 4.2.4, uh, how many faculty or many students are visiting the library daily? That's important. So they will ask only the data for the latest complete record here. Here, uh, maybe uh, I noticed that some of the uh, some of the participants are from the different corners of the India. I want to mention that suppose if college is going for an act in 2001, definitely you have to um, uh, strictly follow this point. Otherwise, uh, you have to strictly follow this point. Uh, otherwise, you will lose your mark, right? So suppose uh, during lockdown, uh, how is possible to the library or even colleges then they are asking number of users using library through key access right? you tell the librarian to insist librarian uh, to access uh, the library with the help of the e-access right e-access means after you are having some e-book you have to create some user id and the password for the staff or student uh, the, in the website you can put all the e-books then you can give permission to access the e-books or uh, to the server So here yeah, I want to mention. Uh, uh, sir, please share your screen, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, so here in the case of the uh, percentage of uh, uh, library user uh, or especially teachers and during lockdown it is it is zero only, right but the thing is uh, you, you request the library uh, to uh, library services by e access that is very important uh, e access so suppose if the teachers and students are using the library in the physical form uh, they will ask the information the teachers and students are busy with library they will ask like that, right? so here they ask whether any computation method or manual or biometric or cartridge, then how to give the daily report generated by uh, integrated library management system. Then having then talking about student community because already we talked about uh, discussed about the student faculty ratio. Right? So the next is on student computer ratio. If the student computer ratio is one is to twenty, it is better. For example, if you are having uh, 2,000 students, uh, definitely you are having 100 computer means 1 is to 20, right? So that is very important. The, the, way, the thing is, you don't count the computer, especially uh, uh, used by the staff or office. You have to show shown the photographs and start with the lab schedules. Even if uh, they are asking me, as much as we can be uploaded as a program. If the students are having one computer, Then regarding the bandwidth nowadays uh, for the online class or whatever webinar, the bandwidth is big one. Less than five years, 10 to 5, 5 to 10 years, or 10 to 30, or 30 to 5 in the uh, 50, or greater than 15. But the thing is, the weightage is 15, even though it's very weightage is 15. But the problem is, they will consider only the least line, right? Not considering the wireless broadband connection. So you have to show the monthly annual receipt. Of course, uh, one of the uh, top mind to one of the college management. Why don't you purchase the internet connection? Because the weightage is only 15, right? Uh, suppose this, this bank of connection, we invest the money for the research purpose, right? Because uh, definitely, uh, if you are getting this type of uh, internet connection, especially the least thing, the minimum cost is not relaxed, right? Of five to seven months. Then the problem is. In the month of uh, doing vacation, no, right? The, in that time also, you will get bills, right? Instead of that, if you Okay, yeah, amount will cheap automatically. Uh, the one more thing is that there is called optional metrics. In some of the colleges, they uh, definitely uh, opt these metrics out, right? With the help of optional metrics. Then I'm talking about the, how much percentage of expenditure, of how many percentage of amount for the maintenance of infrastructure, physical and academic support facility. Here also they are asking exclude this calorie form during the last five years. So as per uh, template, you can prepare. As per template, you can prepare. Then, um, we will move to the hidden file, the student support and progression. Uh, here four key indicators: student support, and second one is student progression. Third one is student participation and activation activities. Then last one is alumni engagement. In the case of uh, uh, student support, you are able to put age 50. Uh, the score is also one party. In the case of PG College, 130 only, right? Student support, 50 weightage. Because in most of the colleges, most of the colleges they are getting um, uh, funds or benefited by benefited by scholarship and the program with the government in the last five years. So you have to mention all the uh, scholarship provided by the government, or especially for the students. Then you can put it in the Excel sheet. Because nowadays the students are getting scholarship only 
um, to the beneficiary okay right? the of getting the rupees is very difficult but the thing is uh, you will get some information from the government if it is authorized by the principal that is enough for this 5.1.1 now in the 5.1.2 apart from the government definitely many instruments are providing as per the institution as well as also by the non government institution last five years uh, then uh, regarding the uh, important aspect of Nowadays, uh, the, uh, the government is insisting on soft skills. You have to promote soft skills for students. Language and communication skills. The importance for the health, especially yoga, physical fitness, health, hygiene, rural ecology will give uh, really, uh, giving the importance to the life skills. And ICD computing skills. And, uh, very small children are going how to operate the laptop or how to operate the mobile phone. Uh, partially, partially, some colleges are not able to hold the phone properly. So we have to give some, have some basic training. Uh, even, I'm very sorry to say that even some faculties are not able to hold the phone. So you have to uh, educate your students uh, how to prepare your mind or how to prepare your mind. Even you convert uh, the voice into uh, text like that. So that is ICT computing skills. So that weightage is key. Uh, regarding the uh, the career conflict, uh, benefited by guidance for competitive exams, the career conflict. Uh, whether you are you are giving any training for PC or like that, or RRB or bank exam. So you have to collect all the information from the career category and you can put it in the form of Excel. Then uh, regarding the uh, other important aspect, whether the institution has a transparent mechanism for timely student payments is including and that then I is insisting on that. Right? Are you implementing guidelines of statutory or regulatory bodies? Are you giving awareness for handling policies zero tolerance? Do you have any mechanism for online or uh, offline student grievances uh, after getting the uh, receiving from the grievances of the grievances to our committee because uh, we are always uh, uh, getting a lot of grievances in person but that's that should not be documented we can act is asking insisting you can make a document otherwise uh, it is not considered for 5.1.5 so the weightage is of uh, five uh, then Uh, regarding uh, student 5.2.1, uh, how many students got placed, right? Because this is uh, it is very important in uh, NIR of also, right? So please concentrate on this one. You can appoint a placement officer. You can the, the placement officer will invite some companies to the college. They they should be placed. Uh, without uh, placement, definitely the college will not get um, get its booster, right? Then uh, regarding the 5.2.2, uh, for example. Uh, six in the students have uh, been for, for, uh, gone for the PG courses. And that is the question. So they are asking for this, the weightage is 15. Some call they put simply put 200 students uh, gone for the PG, but they are asking. They are asking the ID card. If, the, the, that document is very necessary. Suppose if you complete any. Uh, if the student complete PA, PG from your institution, they will ask how many students went for gone for the PhD like that. Suppose if they completed the MPhil, are they gone for PhD like that? you have to give a proper document or five point two point Regarding the other important point, whether your students pass in state or national or international level examination. And flat, flat, get GMAT, CAT or GRE to open civil services. Because most of the students, our students are going for the state government examination. Some students only pass NET examination, right? So you have to collect all the information. Now, the thing is, uh, you can input the NPDL examination also, right? So, because that is also national examination. You can input in 5.2.3. Then regarding 5.3.1, in earlier, earlier in, uh, there is format, only they consider only NAC and international level. Because of the representation from the IQC coordinator of different parts of India, the NAC is, uh, there is 
uh, re revise this uh, matrix 5.2, they also consider the university level and state level also. So in most of the college, they will get a good weightage in 5.3.1. Whether the institution has conducted any sports or cultural event, accomplishment, we have the categories of the most of the institutions are conducting cultural events or sports day regularly, right? So you have to summarize the form of a data template. Then, that if you, uh, you provide all the documents, necessary documents, definitely you will get good weightage, especially when we get on uh, the metrics 5.3.3. Then, regarding the alumni, uh, the problem is the alumni should, alumni should be registered, right? If they register, the necessary information, how much they have contributed in the last five years, less than one lakh, one lakh to three lakhs, three lakhs to four lakhs, four lakhs to five lakhs. Suppose if the college is in a city, they will never be good. Suppose if the college is only remote, they will get only in terms of thousands only, right? But NAC is considered, right? They will get a good weightage for the college severely uh, remote, or uh, uh, that is rural area or urban. Then regarding section six, the weightage is six hundred. Uh, there is no difference between uh, universities, other colleges, or UG and teach college. Uh, there are five indicators. One is institutional vision and leadership. The second one is study development. Faculty improvement strategy. This I want to faculty improvement strategy. Financial management position. The last one is internal quality assurance. Any e governance in administration. Uh, thank to uh, the COVID, right? Because most of the uh, colleges, almost 90% or 95% of the colleges are doing admission only in terms of online, right? So student admission and support. So, E governance is there. So, are you maintaining uh, e governance in finance and accounts because they are receiving uh, salary uh, from with the help of the, the portal, right? So, that is called finance. Are you maintaining uh, some software inside the institution? So, governance. In the case of administration examination, nowadays we yeah, uh, yeah. conducted we conducted examination. Uh, they getting assignment through. Also. So these are the some of the e governance. Right? Then the other thing is, uh, all present teachers provided financial support to attend conferences, workshop, and tours membership in a professional college to do this. The biggest is uh, a faculty going for a uh, attend a conference or workshop. Definitely, some institution will provide money. Then the established institution will provide money. They're asking how much. Uh, amount you are contributed to the welfare of the student. Yes, there is no faculty. Uh, in six point three point three, uh, how much percentage or how many number of professional organ and administrating program are this the institution for teaching and not teaching stuff in the last five years? For teaching, we need the FTP, faculty development program. For example, FTP for the faculty. How to take online how to issue or how to develop e content through uh, OBS. Suppose if any uh, is interested to develop your own uh, e content, uh, please approach me today because we have uploaded some of the videos in my YouTube. Uh, there is SAC IQC coordinator. You just uh, got uh, some things because you, you want to, because without a sophisticated instrument. Uh, we can develop the e content with the help of a laptop or a simply mobile. That is enough. So, any, any training program for, uh, in this non teaching stuff, right? But the non teaching stuff, because they're, they're the official process are there, because some people you know, have to give training, right? That's the important. Then, uh, another question other personal teachers going online are this faculty or program in the last few years because. And nowadays, most of the programs almost almost online only. So definitely, you will get a rich information. Then find four, find two because already we discussing right in three. So those uh, in right in three that should be percentage. Uh, 
the funds, grants, the non government bodies, which was done in the last few years. So, we have mentioned uh, the fund or grant received by individuals, non government bodies. Here, I want to mention the voting committee part. I won't mention all the activities in the data fee, just to split up some activities in the, the credit and fee and some activities in 6.4.2. Definitely, we get most of the and 6.4.2. Then regarding 6.5.3, now the IQC rule starts. Whether the college has uh, taken initiative for uh, participation in NIF or any collaborative initiative with private institution, right? Suppose I am um, telling the, uh, frankly that suppose any, any institution wants help, definitely I will do a IQC group for you, right? Then whether IQC has uh, conducted a regular meeting, feedback like uh, analyze, Steering committee like that. So, are you having any other quality or recognized by state or national or international agency? Then we will move to the last criteria. Uh, uh, in the case of uh, um, key India, some point one, I'm, I'm mentioning that the institution has facility for alternative source of energy and energy conservation versus like solar energy, biogas, and willing to create sensor based energy conservation. Use of eligible power efficient equipment. Uh, almost uh, um, in most of the institutions, they are having some history like use of LED bulbs, right? Because if they are having LED bulbs, use, then that's a common the LED bulb space. Then convert into one, then uh, convert into percentage also. That's very important. Then uh, other thing is nowadays, most of the colleges are going to the solar energy. Some colleges are having biogas. Then sensor based energy conservation. Because suppose, uh, in the department, five fans or six fans are there. If nobody is there, like automatically switch on, uh, switch off the fan. Right? Because uh, during classes, we are uh, supposed to switch off the fan, right? Like this, uh, it is um, sensitive based, so sensor based energy conservation. But uh, I think some of the colleges, many of the colleges have been based on sensor based energy conservation. It is a um, question. You have to mention one, two, three, four, like that. Then the uh, water conservation facility, uh, most of the colleges are having rainwater har harvesting or some colleges are having bore board well. They have constructed tanks, uh, wastewater recently, supposed to be uh, the reverse osmosis uh, thing. Uh, so the reject from the reverse osmosis will uh, definitely affect the soil quality. So over the maintenance of water bodies and distribution system in the campus. Because when I visited one of the colleges, I can have a beautiful days for the city because uh, the drainage from the, the hostel or the water discharge from the um, the bath or whatever may be. Regarding the green initiatives, uh, are you encouraging the use of bicycles or battery powered vehicles? Or engaging pedestrian friendly pathways, ban on use of street vehicles. Suppose you are selling all the five, definitely you get the weightage of four, right? Then, are you ensuring that are you conducting the green audit, energy audit, renewable audit? The thing is, are you getting any award for the green campus uh, or recognition like that? So, beyond the campus, how much promotional activity are doing like that? So you have to mention the audit report and about many action agencies are there. You can approach the action agency for conducting green or not. So the weightage is only five. Next one is institution values and to social responsibility. Whether the institution has disabled free or barrier free environment. For example, uh, are you providing any uh, the days, especially for easy access to classroom, disabled friendly washroom, very, very uh, are you, you are giving signage? Tactile part like display or or you have facility to uh, visit your uh, website that is called in the website uh, for example challenge um, nowadays they are developing the uh, some website especially for the shooting challenge right then the fifth point is we are providing suppose if any visually challenge or physical challenge they are providing some cybers, right? then regarding seven point one point ten it is not a special for NAC. If, if you want to build institution, if you want to make institution in quality, definitely 
how to respond like students, teachers, administrators, and other staff. So you have to connect periodic programs in this way. What are the displays on the other side? Uh, this committee to monitor reference to the code of conduct, institutional services, professional for students, teachers, and administrators, and other staff. Have you conducted any other program of conduct? So, um, so I end, end up this one. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, hello, audible, sir. Yes. Yeah, yes, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, valuable and brief explanation uh, about the NAC accreditation and uh, sharing your thoughts and views and provoking information for this session. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, now, Open to all, any clarification, if you feel free, ask to resource person. Sir, welcome. Hello. Sir. Hello. Yeah, Hello. Hello. Sir. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, sir, uh, um, my... Hello. Yeah, proceed, nice. sir. Sir, uh, my question is with ASM, sir. What is the criteria of increasing the number of the seats in any subject or the stream in PG, PG colleges? May I audible? Uh, sir, 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 pardon, please. Uh, sir, what is the criteria of increasing the number of seats in any subjects or stream in PG colleges? Because uh, suppose if, if your college belongs to <clears throat> affiliated one, because it is purely, uh, for example, in the case of the uh, PG colleges, uh, the maximum strength is only 24 or 20 like that, right? So this is the sanction strength allotted by the government or the university or the consent area of this, right? Suppose if you want to increase the strength, because uh, just a request to the university, because we are having a lot of obligation like that only. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, or you want to promote the... All right, okay. Thank you, okay, sir. Sir. thank you, thank you. Sir, I have a yeah. question. Sir? Uh, yeah. Uh, sir, nowadays most of the colleges are conducting so many seminars and workshops, symposium from their own fund. That means they are uh, getting fund from the participants, 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees. And they are getting okay. also research articles, yeah. then finally compiled everything, edited and then make it a proceedings. Whether it is a weightage to the NAC, sir, this kind of seminars. Uh, actually, the history department, we are having funding agents of ICHR. And each and every department subjects, they are having their own funding agents. That is huge sponsor. I think that that is a weight one. But uh, this kind of uh, seminars, suppose uh, if I can write, is it uh, any weightage for? Uh, Okay, so I, I want to mention uh, some uh, some of the points to you, right? So for, for the, all the participants, right? The first thing is uh, this is the uh, pandemic one, right? Pandemic situation. So we are uh, supposed to do uh, start the uh, 2020 21 academic year from June onwards, but it is not possible for us, right? But our teacher community, especially our faculty, are involved in conducting a lot of seminars as well as webinars for the uh, beneficial for the students. Right. So here, sad question is there is no fund. The fund, the fund is the problem, right? So that that is the first one, right? Uh, the next one is are they giving impact on the the NAC, right? So if you see the activities of the NAC uh, from May on. Well, NAC conducted a series of webinars, especially NAC accreditation for updated colleges and autonomous colleges. Uh, because already I mentioned that NAC is preparing a standard operation procedure. Uh, they will definitely consider this webinar 
with the particular criteria. They will give weightage also. The other thing is, uh, as a faculty, uh, at the end of the day, right, if you take uh, two or three classes, then we are very happy, right? That, is, that makes a satisfaction, right? Without, uh, without, uh, without taking classes, uh, the day is not in for us, especially for the faculty, right? Suppose if you, uh, definitely we are missing uh, the instead of online more online teaching or digital teaching, if you see the student directly, then that is a real satisfaction. But because of the pandemic, we move to the, the online or digital teaching. Uh, this is only for the temporary arrangement. Only, right? I want to insist on the thing also that is called blended learning. Right? The NAC has introduced the term that is called blended learning. So, suppose if you are teaching a history of uh, Ternal Valley or history of uh, Tutuuri uh, on tomorrow. Right? Suppose if you uh, send uh, some video regarding the history of Tamil Bay or history of, Bay, or history of uh, Kashmir. Uh, you are presenting this video uh, in the YouTube. Then you ask the students to listen the YouTube video, right? Uh, then the next day, they, when they come to the class, definitely they will ask many questions, right? They they will rectify the clarification. So this is the this is nothing but blended learning, but lot of limitations are there in online teaching. I agree. The most of the faculty have agreed there is no problem at all, right? So definitely the NAG will give a good package to the webinars uh, conducted by the institution in the near future. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anybody there? Anybody clarification? Any doubts? Thank you, Rajas, sir. Anybody participants? Please feel free to ask your questions. Rajas, sir. Yeah, Anir Kumar Sharma, sir. Yes, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Very good afternoon, sir. Uh, actually, uh, sir, uh, your love uh, is spellbound me uh, to uh, take the part in this webinar today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, my uh, only one question uh, to my respected resource person. Yeah, proceed, sir. Yes, sir. In spite of rules and regulations uh, imposed by UGC and NAC also, there are several uh, teachers are deputed as a tutor in uh, private colleges. Whether they are uh, accredited by uh, B plus or B triple plus, uh, uh, in that condition, uh, what should uh, yeah, what type of the action should be taken by the NAC or the UGC? Because uh, are we saying that some of the faculty are working in uh, tutorial college or act as a tutor? Uh, Mr. Anil, uh, Anil Kumar, yes. Anil Kumar, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, are you asking whether uh, the NAC has given weightage for the, uh, for the faculty appointed as a tutor? Yes, sir. Well, uh, as so far I know, so far as I uh, I know, that there are several institutions are uh, in India where the. Um, uh, private people as a tutor are working mm. well maybe the record is good the record is perfect no doubt mm. but actual persons are not there yeah i agree agree because uh, nowadays the uh, nrf is insisting on hand right yeah uh, uh, how many colleges are giving salary to the faculty through online mode or through the, the internet banking right Okay. Suppose if they, if they yeah. give the money or salary to the faculty or tutor uh, through the <laughs> banking mode, automatically the same faculty working in different colleges will be a uh, yes. right? Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Yeah. Some yeah. of yeah. the colleges are following the. Huh? Because, uh, yes, sir. I am very sorry to say that 
uh, during the pandemic period, uh, some of the colleges are not able to give the salary also uh, for the faculty, <laughs> right? It's full uh, name it is a pitiful one, right? It is a pitiful one. Right? So, uh, in near future, uh, definitely uh, NAC will have a uh, NAC will streamline, right? Will okay, stream. sir. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Now I would like to vote. Ah, oh, sir, Roshan, sir. One minute, Rajesh. Yeah, sir, Roshan, sir. Yeah, uh, uh, one minute. Okay. Uh, I want to request the faculty, right, or the participant, uh, because we are being the faculty, we are working for the beneficial of the institution, right, especially for the uh, students. Without students, no faculty will be there. I request all the faculty and participants not to work for NAC or NARF. If you take Hello. classes, if you take classes, definitely we are very, very satisfactory, right? Only work for the student community, work for the institution development, right? Definitely your institution or uh, get good grade in the NAC. This is my humble Records to all the participants and the faculty. Thank you. Yeah, fine, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Rajesh, Rajesh, one more. One yeah, more. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome. Yeah, sir. Really, on behalf of Thrower College, yeah, the entire participants, I thank our professor because since I am a very kind of this uh, uh, NAC coordinator, so I today I myself cleared everything. So it is a highly useful to me, and I hope that all the uh, participants, especially those who are acting as a coordinator for the IPAC, it will be more, it is more useful, sir. So really thank, and I request personally on behalf of Trugar College, whenever the college is opening after the pandemic is over. So I request you that please you come to my college and uh, uh, teach like this, and it will be more helpful for all the faculty, sir. And one more thing, definitely, is really, sir, definitely. Yes, sir. as you said already, I want to continue your thoughts. Teaching person is a great one. It is a one-time chance, as like a OTP, a one-time chance given by God. It's not a choice. Yes. So we got the chance to teach the students, young generations. So it is a given by God. Next time, the chance will not get it. So each and every teachers definitely should work for the welfare of the India. But will from the future generation. Automatically, the college will develop. Automatically, everything will develop. So I really happy. Uh, it was in this lecture is highly motivated, as and all the participants. And I hope that definitely professor will come to my college and uh, he will motivate all the remaining uh, purposes in my colleges. And my college will uh, develop like Sadhguruptala College because uh, Sadhguruptala College is one of the biggest one. And uh, everyone knows that college. So it shows that uh, how the college is having higher uh, quality of education giving. You know, on your lecture, everyone, I think that everyone understood that you are from Salakatala College. You are Rajesh also belongs to Salakatala College. So, what kind of quality of education Rajesh received from Salakatala College, now we are uh, experiencing from him. So, really, I'm happy, sir. And once in all, thank you, Dr. Rajesh and uh, your sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you so um, much, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. We are blessed with uh, good alumni like Rajesh. Thank you, Rajesh. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. We yeah, are both are very proud of having that. Uh, he is our colleague and he is our alumni, sir. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you so much, both, sir. Yeah, now I would like to vote of thanks, uh, Mr. Ms. V. Anushya. Good morning, one and all again. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, audible. Carry on, ma'am. Hold on, means that we love you all for that we are all to us. Thank you is a word. When it is said with a whole heart and soul, it radiates peace, love, and hormone all around us. It's my pleasure to propose a word of thanks in this forum. First of all, I would like to extend my thanks to our honorable resource person, Dr. A. Syed Mohammed. Associate Professor and Research Head, Department of History, Chemistry, 
and IQAC coordinator, Sadakadupla College, Rahmatnagar. He explained about NAC accreditation very well and also it will be very helpful to all the faculties and people present here. Also, he explained about how to prepare the records for NAC accreditation and how to maintain it. I'm sure that all the participants got many ideas about NAC accreditation and will share to many papers. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I would like to extend my thank to the Secretary of Trivaluar College, Honorable Principal and Head of the Department of History, Dr. L. Ravishankar Sir. Thank you, sir. And all the faculty members of the organizing committee for giving valuable support to organizing this session with the fruit of knowledge and a grand success. Thank you all. Next, yeah. I would like to thank Dr. Rajesh, organizing secretary of the session who organized it in a great manner and give it a grand success. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Last but not the least, I would like to say a big thank to all the participants who are present here with a great patience and without whom this session will not be complete in a grand manner and this much success. Once again, I thank you all for your participation and we expect with you in the tomorrow session also. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. We hope to see you tomorrow, 11.30. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you, Rajesh. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Shall I leave? Ah, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank okay. you. Thank you, you so much. Sir. I'm leaving, right? Okay, thank yeah, you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.